teleprompter, because he's going to go read those papers, he's going to read those teleprompters. Uh, and I want to make sure when I write, he reads. <laughs> Never going to leave his kid me writing on the page at the teleprompter is what he's going to say. But anyway, <laughs> I think that both the conservatives and the liberals are not seeing the whole picture. Our problem is not just bad destruction. It is that, but it's not only that. Our problem is that a lot of the conservatives have imposed, in my opinion, that has been adopted by some of our liberals. The new racism is low expectation, telling us because of these family problems, telling us because of our environment, we can't excel. I have two daughters. They go to school and are told, if you can read, write, and speak eloquently, you're acting white. So it has become part of the culture that to be black today, you have to be a thug and a street person and a gangster and a hoodlum. That's blackness. The danger of that is this is the first generation that is not trying to do what Mary Wright Edelman said, try to, try to aspire. I mean, we came out of slavery wanted to read right, it was illegal to read right. All the way to Brown versus Board of Education. The first generation that we had a meeting that I didn't get the memo to that decided we didn't want to be educated. We didn't want to be refined. We didn't want to be polished. Somebody had a meeting and told us we wanted to be gangsters and thugs and we took off our Malcolm shirts and put on Scarface and started naming ourselves that. I don't know where we got lost, but we need to redefine that black excellence was always about what we could achieve against the odds, not using the odds to rationalize that we were down. I didn't even know I was underprivileged. <laughs> I didn't even know I was underprivileged until I got to Brooklyn College. Because my mother did raise me as to what I was. When I got to sociology at Brooklyn College, said they gonna study underprivileged. I said, it's all right with me. <laughs> he said, we're going to study people out of single parent homes in the projects on welfare. I said, he's talking about me. But <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't raised as to what I couldn't do. I was raised as what was expected of me. So, first thing I would conclude is I would say that we've got to raise the expectations. Second, the president must protect, I would say, he has to protect the students. Everybody has a representative in the educational industry but the kids. The yep. teachers got the union. The principals have the union. Minister, everybody's protected but the kids. And, and the liberals can't tell me they're fighting for the right to not educate my kids. That is not fighting for the rights. That is fighting to use my kid as a pawn for your paycheck. And I do not consider that progression. I consider that regress. I would challenge us on this culture that we've adopted that is not black culture but an imposed decadence that someone is trying to sell us as black. We cannot, while we have a black family in the White House, accept our women being called massage in his name. We do not have any homes in the White House. We have three black women of power in the White House. We must challenge a music and film industry that has romanticized degrading blacks. Uh, my whole battle, as Cornell and I have talked about that, with, with some of our artists using language in our community that they can't use in other communities. And they got angry with me, said they had a right to free speech. They do not have the right to free speech. You cannot go in any studio and cut a CD against anybody but black folks. And you should. If you go to the studio saying anything against Greeks, hate speech, and it is. Say anything against Irish, hate speech, and it is. Say anything against Jews, hate speech, and it is. Say anything against gays, hate speech, and it is. So get, get it right. Anti-Greek, hate speech. Anti-Irish, hate speech. Anti-Jews, hate speech. Anti-gay, hate speech. Call blacks niggas free speech. Wow. <laughs> that we are expected
give him the education, we demand you to serve us in education, and we cannot glorify and be it down. Yeah. Last point I would tell the president, I debated one night, uh, Jeffrey, one of the, my gangster rapper friends on one of the cable stations, I won't call the name, and it was hip hop versus America, and he had a fit. I call it nigga fit all night. Nigga, nigga, nigga. And I told him, I said, I think it's inappropriate. I think we've got to stop using it. I've used it, others use it. We've got to stop this. We've got to raise our expectations. Nigga, 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 I don't care what you say. At the end of the night, Ernie, he couldn't, wouldn't concede, I wouldn't concede. Four or five weeks later, I pick up a paper somewhere on the road, he's been arrested. Two or three days after that, they called me from my office and Ash Ash Network said he was on the phone, wanted to talk to me. I said, connect him through to my cell phone. They connected him through. I said, how you doing? Man, I ain't doing too good. I said, what's wrong? Yeah, man, I got busted. I said, yeah, I read about it in the paper. Yeah, man, that's why I called you. I need your help. I said, yeah, well, whatever you need to do, what you need you to do. He said, uh, they violated my civil rights. I told him, niggas ain't got no to go to the